Okay, welcome everybody. This is, C this is CSIS 3020 Web Programming and Design. This is the fourth week, second video lecture. So before we went to a break, we were discussing about JavaScript. It's important why we're going to be unit, and we're trying to find a few samples. that are out there. A few samples of JavaScript. JavaScript is really used for widgets. I mean, you want something that it's very user-friendly, that it does some kind of dynamic that HTML doesn't provide or styles doesn't provide for you. JavaScript. Definitely, and it ha if it hasn't been created, and most probably it hasn't. I mean, if your need is very specific, if it's a specific widget that you need for your website, most probably it has not been created, and you will have to roll up your sleeves and create that widget using JavaScript. But there's a high probability that it has been created, that exists, that you can download and customize for your needs. Okay. <coughs> I just came across the website. 75 really useful JavaScript techniques. It's a huge page. Well, it gives you five examples of why you will need JavaScript in your videos. Anybody has seen something like this, where you have to input a date? Okay. And there are so many different ways of inputting a date. But if you provide a calendar, where the person can actually pick and choose the year, the month, just with the mouse and click on it. I mean, the end result is just a date. Month, typically do, uh, two digits, slash, day, typically two digits, slash, year, typically four digits, right? But you're not, if you create a website and you ask a person to actually input the two digits for the month, the two digits for the uh, for the day, etc., etc., then it's not very user-friendly, is it? So you create a widget, look at this one, open time picker. I'm sorry? This is coding that smashingmagazine.com. It gives you, uh, what I did is I Google magnifying glass effect JavaScript menu and one of the f hits that I get is the 75 really useful JavaScript techniques. And 75 samples of why you will use JavaScript. Look at this one. This one is showing a menu. See this menu? This is an example from the Filament Group Lab articles. Drop down the iPod drill down menu. So if you want to simulate something similar to what you get in, in the menu in the iPod, 
obviously you're not going to be able to do that with just HTML and CSS. With CSS you can simulate a drop down but not this kind of drop down. You guys see how smooth it is when you click on it? In a CSS you will see either the whole thing appears and disappears. It's not as smooth. It doesn't feel like it's actually dropping down. The only way you can accomplish that is with JavaScript. Let's do JavaScript You guys seen something like this? This is what it's called the accordion menu. Okay. You can't accomplish that with just HTML and cascading style sheet. Now you are manipulating HTML and cascading style sheet elements. But you need code that downloads to the client, the browser, and dynamically changes the attributes of those elements programmatically. And this site, for instance, will tell you how that's done. Look at this. All you have to do is put inside your page, your HTML page, a script tag. And you tell it that its type is going to be text, but it's going to contain JavaScript code text that contains JavaScript code. And the source is going to be a JS file with extension JS. And these guys, these guys provide the D, 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 A, the D, D accordion.js. And in their example, they show you how to use it so that you can customize it to your needs. So you have this type of menu it will behave like this. Finally, here it is. This is what I was talking about. I don't have a Mac. But you can create this type of menu in your website. So you can go to ndesign-studio.com and it will show you a demo and how it's accomplished. So look at this menu for instance. Looks nice.
most most websites you will be able to download the JS and there's an explanation how what you have to do to customize it to your web to your web needs you can use all that stuff typically students in the past what they've done is they have created the dynamic part that uses JavaScript is the menu look at these menus Eh, they're okay. When you have to display large amounts of information and they have a hierarchy pattern to it, then it makes sense to use this JavaScript. But it doesn't have to be a menu. If you if you can customize a calendar or um, uh, an image slideshow or uh, you know whatever, okay. Are there any questions? Now, to do that, obviously, you guys have to understand JavaScript first because it's not just a matter of downloading the JS, put it as part of your project, and voila, it works. No, you have to understand the interface to that JavaScript widget or whatever it is that you're downloading. And you have to understand how to manipulate it to accomplish whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish in your website. Okay? And to do that, you guys are going to have to go through the video lectures, the two video lectures that I posted last year on JavaScript, read chapters 6, 7, 8, and 9, okay? And then also understand the next few chapters, I think it's uh, chapters 10, 11, and 12, and there's going to be two more video lectures on it for next week. Look at this one. Believe it or not, this is JavaScript. really powerful stuff. I mean, it's almost like you have a standalone application, and you guys understand what a standalone application is, right? It's some standalone, it's some, yeah, some piece of software that came with a you know, DVD or CD, you popped that into your computer, and it has everything that it needs to run locally on your computer. It's very fast, it's very user-friendly. You will never think that this is a website that is going all the way across the web to some server hundreds if not thousands of miles away and you're communicating with this server okay because it's so user friendly it's so fast that it looks like it's a standalone application In fact, what it is, is JavaScript running under the browser. Now, Firebug Firebug, when you analyze an HTML page with Firebug, 
there is a section called the HTML sections, which is where you will look at the code. There's a CSS section, which you, it will allow you to look at the cascading style sheet, although in this section you will also be able to do that. But there's also a section called the script section, which is turned off or disabled by default. You can enable it. So when you enable it, you reload, it would actually show you the JavaScript that was downloaded. The code. You can actually take a look at the code that render that renders this page as far as JavaScript is concerned. Okay? And you can actually debug it. See, right now I'm debugging it. What exactly is that, the impact of your website? Well, it's going to go and it's going to try to render your website, your page. So it's going to go and look at the HTML, and then it's going to go and look at your CSS, and then it's going to go and look at your JS, and it's going to time exactly how much time it takes to render the HTML, to bring down the CSS, to bring down the JS, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it will tell you at the end, when it finally renders the page, hey, your page is taking 4.8 seconds to render. That's absurd. Have you guys gone to a website where it takes four seconds a one page to render? E eventually you're like, you get impatient. You're like, I don't like this website. And you just don't come back. And if you look at why, it's because it's using images that are so high resolution. And you don't need really high resolution on the website. There's there's a, a happy medium where you don't lose the quality but the size are still down there okay typically websites where they use images that are two megs I mean we're talking about a picture that it's two megs it's huge and that uses up bandwidth and it takes time to render so there is a tool in Firebug and I cannot find it right now here it is I just found it. That it tells you exactly how each piece of your web took to download. Why are you taking so long, man? Now it's analyzing my mood. Anyway, the average should be under one second. The average for the entire web page. That means content, style, JavaScript, images, everything that is required to render that page should be under one second.
Now, when you create that sec secondary page, make sure that you create content. I want to see content. In other words, if you are creating, let's say you're creating a baseball league manager website. Your home page was showing a list of teams in this tournament. You decide that your secondary page is going to be the standings. I want to see a secondary page that shows me the standings of those teams that are on the home page and everything that involves to show the standings like if the real thing happened I'm expecting you to provide content make it up yeah it's fake information I don't care I don't care if you put the Red Sox up on the top of the standings table or whatever team you want it's going to be fake data, but it's going to give me a feeling of what your page looks like. That standings page looks like. Eventually, all that information is going to come out of a database. Okay? So you're not going to have to create it from scratch. But right now, that one page and all its fake information is going to be from scratch. And that's what you have to turn in next week. Okay? Any questions? Yes. yes. Actually, that's a good point. I'm going to make it available so that you guys can see how I'm building it. You know, how I'm building Timex. So, my secondary page, by the way, it's going to be a page that shows um, the list of timesheets. So I just logged in into my website. I want to be able to see a list of my timesheets. So I'm going to be producing an HTML page with fake timesheets. But I'm going to show you how that page is going to look like. It's going to have a timesheet date. It's going to have a timesheet status. It's going to tell me whether it's, um, whether it's uh, how many hours they were submitted. It's going to tell me what department they were submitted to. I mean, stuff that is relevant for my topic. So my Moodle page, the one that shows the homework that it's due next week, takes 937 microseconds total. Okay, and you can actually see all the different styles that are downloaded. all the different images that are downloaded and you can actually see a timeline how long each one took I'm sorry yeah it gives you the total at the beginning actually here it is 937 microseconds yeah it's made out of those like for instance this one is heavy this one is 235 microseconds 
that's an image see all the different images that I download you guys see them that's a good point where are they ah they're hidden They're hidden. <laughs> Not a very good way of um, making use of the resources, right? Okay, guys. So that's all I have for tonight. You guys have any questions? Do you know what to do next week? No questions about it? If you do not want to read all those chapters of the book, because you're too lazy about it, you want the summary version of it, here it is, W3 Schools. It gives you just the basics and it gives you an example of each one of the basics. Okay? Go into the JavaScript. Learn JavaScript. Chapter chapter six, seven, eight, and nine probably covers all the way to here. The JS home, the JS basic stuff, all this stuff. Later on next week, we're going to be covering the other stuff, objects and more advanced JavaScript stuff. With Firefox or with IE? Oh, you were using an Eclipse. So you were using the browser that is an Eclipse. Okay. The browser in Eclipse, remember, especially if you're using the old uh, Eclipse P for PHP developers, or I don't know, I don't remember which one I told you to download. But it, that one probably comes with the old IE 5.0, version, a very rundown version of, of browser. So don't trust the browser that is in Eclipse. Okay, guys. So see you next week, then.